Welcome back everyone to some more World of Tanks in this river we have Boris come back in the tier 10 British uh, regular medium tank, right? <laughs> they are wheeled mediums as well um, in the British line these days, but they, they kind of suck. Didn't go towards them. It is the Centurion Action 10 anyway, uh, which is actually probably my favorite vehicle to play at the moment, because it's just like such a good vehicle all round, right? It doesn't have a lot of weaknesses. It's not the fastest, maybe, like with a 55 kilometers an hour top speed. Um, the armor might not be the best. It can be penned in the turret, but it can bounce a few shells as well. So, um, it's it's pretty much kind of a, a good all-round vehicle, like I said. So, Boris Comeback is going to go with Vents in the, the regular mobility slot that you get at the start. Um, a non-upgraded bounty... Vert stamps and non upgraded bounty rammer, which is rather surprising. I mean, if you use bounty equipment, you usually see them upgraded, right? But I can understand someone doesn't have a lot of credits trying to save them for uh, buying vehicles or stuff like that. You don't want to spend the 3 million credits that you will need to spend to upgrade every piece of uh, bounty equipment. So, just going with these uh, for now, with. Uh, a special gun rammer directive, and I mean, Boris does have three marks on the Centurion Action 10, so who am I to say anything about their loadout, right? Lovely shot into the Manticore at the start over here as well. So, Centurion Action 10, it has 410 meters V-range, which is amazing, it has a pretty high DPM, it has good gun handling, it's just like I said, very good all-round vehicle, but where the vehicle truly shines, right, why does this vehicle become, in my opinion, the best vehicle to play at tier 10, the most fun vehicle to play. It is the shell variety, as you can see, you have lovely APCR rounds with 268mm of penetration. Then you have heat rounds, which is always nice to have 330mm of heat, heat round penetration. It's delicious. And as HG, you have Hesh, actually, which have 105mm, where did that actually go? I have no idea. <laughs> but yeah, 105mm of penetration with five, no, 480, 510 is on a different vehicle, 480 damage on those lovely Hesh rounds. I would have actually loved to see a Hesh intuition switch, maybe if Boris has intuition, shoot the grill. Uh, but maybe next time, maybe next time that is going to happen. So, yeah, kind of went over most of the Centurion Action 10 stuff. Good all round, amazing shell variety. It's kind of like... Do you really need anything else? Personally, not really. The mobility is good enough for me. The gun is amazing. I just enjoy every single time I take this vehicle out for a spin. And that is basically what I played the game for, right? Hopefully that's what you played the game for as well, just to have fun. And I'm having a lot of fun playing this vehicle. Which is which is why I want to showcase this vehicle today. Hopefully, hopefully other people are going to enjoy um, playing the Centurion Action 10 after they watch this video. Maybe more people will do that, hopefully. Anyway, anyway, let's go and focus on Boris's game over here. Up to 1,300 damage so far. One kill in this battle. But, I mean, it's still pretty close. Down by one vehicle. The HP difference might not be, you know, as bad as it looks. Because a lot of vehicles are outside of the range range, so we do not know. Another one into the 430U, and now the game is tied once again. That is a lovely shot by Boris over there. And I mean, that, uh, can, can, yes, we can catch the 100 LT as well. Three kills for Boris in this battle so far, but it's still even in terms of kills in this battle. So, yeah. Like I said, just very good all round. Amazing shell variety. You are accurate enough to hit those long-range snipes if you need to. You have the penetration if you want to switch to heat to not lose any penetration with APCR. You can do that as well. And it's just it's just amazing. Unfortunately, the heavies are collapsing at the moment. This is not amazing. This is definitely not amazing. Down by four vehicles now. Oh my goodness, this is not looking good. We don't know how much the, the HP difference is. Like I said earlier, if they're outside of the render range, you cannot tell. How much HP they have. Okay. So, Boris with uh, five other allies against ten 
vehicles with the enemy team can catch the main turret over here. Into the site, and unfortunately does not hit, probably hit the turret or something. Not going through the main turret. I would go for after the main turret over here, but Boris is not going after the Minotaur, unfortunately. I would always recommend uh, going for the one-shot vehicle first. Always try to dwindle their numbers, right? Remove the enemy's guns from the game, especially a Minotaur again, which is huge. It is very important to finish off those vehicles quickly. Very dangerous. And unfortunately, the enemy team has won the east. They've won the south. This is not looking good. They can just push into the cap circle and most likely secure the win over here. But Boris is going to go on an offensive over here, trying to put some pressure on the enemy cap, maybe. What are they going to do? Looks like the SDF is going into the cap circle, trying to get the enemy team to go back to base instead of just win by capping. And there we go. Grill is spotted. TVP is spotted. Maybe we can get the hash switch. No, we do not get it at the moment. Um, what is going to do over here? 430U is hold down. You don't want to shoot a hold down. 430 but there we go. STV is spotted. Grill is spotted. Trying to put one on the move. Don't want to get caught out in the open over here. And that is why Boris does not stop. Let's try to use that turret armor. There is a bit of turret armor, like I said. And there's the Hesh. There's the Hesh switch that I wanted. 508 damage into the enemy. Grill 15, which is absolutely amazing. Can we go into the Grill 15 over there as well? Switching to APC. I don't actually want to shoot Hesh into the tracks. Unfortunately, the STV goes twice into Boris's uh, vehicle, and there we go, side of the SDRV 103B, one to the side, and just look at that rate of fire, just look at that post buff rate of fire, it's just so fun, another one to the SDRV, and this game is actually getting rather close, it's only down by four, it was three for a second, it was actually two for a second, but now it's four once again, SDRV is a one shot, once more, can finish off the SDRV, no, the grill is pushing forwards, putting one to the grill, maybe go for an HE, HE Hesh actually switch, there we go, Hesh, can we get a high roll? Just need a small high roll war gaming, please and thank you. There we go, I actually do get a high roll, 509 damage. And now it is a uh, 12 and 9 battle STRV. One into the lower plate, good heat round into the weaker lower plate of the SD1, STRV 103B. And now the Mentaro, one into the lower plate as well. This is just, this is just kind of like a shooting range for Boris at the moment. Just a shooting range. You do need to watch out with heat over here into the side of the 430U because it does have those tracks that can absorb the shells. As you can see over here, the tracks absorbing the heat round. APC I might have gone through, but heat will not. One into the upper plate, luckily, since the 430U on fire, but the 430U puts another shell into Boris, which is not good. Another one into the 430U. Don't get another hit. Don't take another hit. Luckily, the 430U is firing heat as well, and that means that it can be absorbed by the tracks. And there we go. There we go, shutting down the 430U with a lovely heat round into the upper plate, making this a 3v2 in favor of the enemy team. But that K91 had, a, I guess, an amazing game, holding off uh, the advance towards the base and now pushing forwards against the 100. There we go. Whew. Non-stop action over here in this uh, shooting range that we had. 7 kills, 6,726 damage done so far. Three vehicles remaining. That E100 was very healthy. Very healthy indeed. You do need to watch out. You do not want to get hit by that E100. He can actually one shot um, Boris if they are using the big gun. There we go. Onto the side of the E100. Those heat rounds are going to prove very nice, very effective against the E100, especially if it doesn't angle the turret. And that E100 is a two shot. Can we catch him in those cheeks? Unfortunately, that did not go through. That's surprising, actually. I would expect those heat rounds to go through the 100. Another one, actually not firing. Going after the Batchat instead. I think that was a really good move. Falling back and then shooting the Batchat. You do not want to get spotted out in the open right now with an auto-loading French medium just sitting and waiting for you. You just want to keep on moving, find better positions, isolate them, go and fight them one by one by one, and just don't let them go after you over here. So amazing stuff by Boris over here. Very, very smart decision not to shoot the 100 because like I said, if the 100 spots Boris over there, the badge just, just goes one, two, and game is over. It's so actually pulling back behind the ridge and then shooting the badge that was outside of the view range was just amazing stuff. Amazing stuff by Boris over here. Not being greedy, not going after the 100 and actually using their brain in this situation. <clears throat> Whew, yes, my goodness. There's the TVP. Okay, is it an FK? It looks like an FK TVP. And luckily, got set on fire. It doesn't have a fire extinguisher. That means that the TVP is going down. Can't return to this battle, even if it was a disconnect. 
and they were trying to go back. And now it is a 1v2. 8 kills, my goodness, 8,579 damage. Need those 2 kills for the pools medal. Uh, I don't think it was enough for Kolobanos. I think it was like a 1v3, right? But there we go, E100 is spotted. Go back behind the bush. This is just perfect. Go forwards into the bush to spot. Go back behind the bush to not get spotted and shoot. And this is just... This is just... Textbook World of Tanks gameplay. The Bachelor actually getting behind us, and that's how we got spotted. That is surprising. I definitely did not expect the Bachelor to be um, inside the forest over here. Okay. Okay, Boris, so far, with pretty much a masterclass on how to play World of Tanks so far. Amazing, like, focusing the right enemies, right? Except for the first uh, shot against the Minotauro, that I think should have gone... Instead of the 430, you should have gone after the Minotauro. But apart from that, it's, it has just been a perfect game over here. Focusing down those low HP vehicles. Just shooting whoever's the biggest threat at the moment. Not shooting the 100 and then going into the bush to spot going behind to shoot. It's just World of Tanks ABC done to perfection. And this is why I love this replay so much. It's like, it's not something crazy, right? But the fact that... Boris is just constantly thinking ahead. Absolutely amazing. I love this so much. So, so, in a 1v1 against the Bacha 25T, they can actually two-shot Boris over here. Boris can't one-shot the Bacha, so this is dangerous. That Bacha has <clears throat> an auto-loader that can finish off Boris with two shells. That means that Boris needs to fire two, but the Bacha can fire like three, maybe even four. And the time it takes Boris to fire only two. Trying to go for the cap over here. Maybe the match is going to be too passive. Hopefully the match won't go for us. 50 seconds remaining on the cap over here. Just waiting. Hoping. Praying. I actually don't really like the, the moving backwards and forwards. Because medium tanks don't have the light tank passive. That means that when you move backwards and forwards, you actually lose camo. So I would have loved if Boris just sat in the same position. But there's the batch. It's spotted towards the north. My goodness. One into the banter, the banter blocks, it bounces off uh, the Boris over here, the one goes through, Boris finishes off the banter, nice, lovely, perfect stuff by Boris over there. That was crazy, that was crazy, that first bounce from the banter, my goodness, my goodness, it was actually absorbed by the armor most likely, I'm trying to go through the side, and I guess the spaced armor just absorbed that heat round. So... Amazing stuff by Boris. 10 kills, 10k damage as well. Incredible. It's just like, like I said earlier, this is World of Tanks ABC done to perfection. It's like an amazing game. Incredible stuff over here by Boris. Can't really complain about anything. There's nothing I can say that was wrong, except for maybe, like I said, the Minotauro shot. But I mean, 10, 10 kills, 10k. You know, you know. Anyway, amazing stuff. GG Boris, and let's just check how amazing this game was in the post-game stats real quick. There we go. Easy ace tanker for the 1696. 69 nice. <laughs> Base experience earned. Over here, a bunch of ribbons. A pools medal for the 10 kills over here. Amazing stuff. Tank sniper for causing the most damage of, from a distance of at least 300 meters. High caliber. For the over 10k damage done, and a top in for at least 6 kills, 10 in this case. As you can see, just... Just carrying this team on their back. Amazing game by Boris. Throwing 38 rounds, 34 hit, 28 penetrated. So, a really decent ratio over here. Um, 10,000 damage, like we said, 2,282 from a distance of more than 300 meters, which is, like I said, this vehicle can do pretty much everything. Right, it's a, just such a good all-round vehicle. It can snipe if you need it to. It can be more aggressive if you need it to. And it's just lovely. Uh, seven hits received, four pen, three did not. Like I said earlier as well, that vehicle can bounce a few shells, but I wouldn't trust it too much because uh, once they start firing gold, yes, yes, you will not feel very well. Um, 830 damage blocked by the armor. 13 vehicles damage, that is like, all but two of the enemy vehicles were damaged by Boris over here, and ten were destroyed, which is two-thirds of the enemy team. 4.5 kilometers travel, just going all around the map, wherever the team needed them to be. Amazing stuff over here. Losing 20,000 credits, which is actually rather surprising. 
Um, I don't think Boris had too much gold. I guess the 100 at the end, sure. But before that, and the full 30, so I guess there was a lot of gold shooting over here. But it, it wasn't, like, only gold, so I can respect that. The lovely hash switches as well. I really enjoyed uh, Boris's gameplay over here. But still, 20,000 credits is a, is a payment you, are, you should be willing to pay, right? For a 10k game in this 12-ish minute battle, 2,544 experience earned and 128 free XP. Um, but yeah, this is it for this video, I guess. GG Boris, well played, amazing stuff over here. Every time I get 10k, it's just, it's just crazy. 10 kills as well. Um, but like I said, this is the end of this video. So let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of the Centurion Action 10? Do you like it as much as I do? Do you think it's actually one of the most fun vehicles to play in the game at the moment? Let me know your, th your thoughts, your opinions in the comments down below. And as usual, thank you so much everyone for watching. You're awesome. Stay awesome. Stay safe. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. ta -tas.